Hey guys, this is Molly Rules 999 here doing a very uh, uh, quick little review on Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Um, I'm just feeling in the mood to whip something up and I actually just wrote down some stuff uh, which I put into a text review. So I'm just going to do a, you know, a spoken version of it, but if you want the transcript of it, uh, I am going to copy and paste it down there, um, or up there, or wherever YouTube decides to put it. Um, so, you know, we're, we're just going to jump right into it now. Um, okay, where is that transcript? I, I'm sorry for the unprofessionalism, I'm just in the mood where I want to whip something up fast. It's just me. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Uh, after watching the trailer, the only thing I could think of was, God, how many times is Voldemort going to go, yeah! Then I thought, <laughs> I hope the characters and the story in general finishes in the way it should. I have read all the Harry Potter books up to halfway of Order of the Phoenix, because I lost the book, sadly. Um, so I was clueless as to what was going to happen during the last three and a half movies. Of course, the half being the half that I never read of Order of the Phoenix. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, I, I was clear as what was going to happen. Um, number six surprised me, plot-wise, especially during a certain scene where a certain someone kills a certain other someone. I'm not going to spoil anything here. I'm trying to get this spoiler-free. Um, and... In Deathly Hallows Part 1, where you really get to see the maturity from Potter, Weasley, and Granger. Now Part 2 has arrived, and I can say without hesitation, this is easily one of my favourite films of the whole series. So what makes it so good? The first thing to look at is the visuals. While they, while they aren't overly realistic, like the texture and lighting work for Nagini, the snake thing um, being an example the special effects really do aid the movie in a big way everything from flashes of wands to multiplying gourds to the wonderfully made smoke emitted from the guinea near the end of the film are an absolute blast to watch um, the signature tint of dark blue is present throughout the movie, so it still has its dark tone, however, that's not to say the entire movie is dark, but I won't go into those parts to uh, avoid spoilers. Another thing to take into account is the pacing, nothing was made too boring in the film, and contrary to the trailers, it didn't keep the whole movie centred around the final battle between Voldemort and Harry. Uh, everything that needed to be there was there, with the only exception being a certain scene with the dragon, which you see in the trailer, which I personally would have liked to have seen more of. Um, the most impressive part of it, though, uh, for me, was the story. It, it explained everything, and it truly does tie up any loose ends in the previous films that, before now, made the series feel a little bit hollow. Um, one scene in particular is when Harry makes some very shocking discoveries about his past. It was an overload of information at once, and respectively, there was a moment where Harry had to sit down and understand what he just discovered. This was also to give the audience time to think about it, too. Um, the, the, there are elements in the movie that pull you in, and feel exactly how Harry and the characters around him are feeling. This is mostly because of the brilliant acting and near-perfect sound design. Uh, the actors themselves do mostly outstanding performances. Um, nothing was overdone, it, it was uh, melodramatic at parts, but it's believable enough and relative to the character they betray. Most of the time though, the acting was extremely convincing. I, I could even go out on a limb and say this movie had the most convincing acting compared to any other movie. Honourable mentions go to Warwick Davis who played Griphook the Goblin, um, Oliver Phelps playing George Weasley and Geraldine Somerville playing Lily Potter. Um, 
overall, this is a wonderful movie that is very hard to be disappointed about. From the 16th of November, 2001, to 13th of July, 2011, nearly 10 years, we have seen the Harry Potter universe evolve and grow. It has been a long ride, but now the films have to come to an end. And you have my word that this series has an ending that it well and truly deserves. Overall, I, I would give it a uh, 9.5 out of 10. Um, and that that is it for me. That, that's all I can possibly say about it. It's just... It's a movie that I would definitely recommend to anyone who has seen the other Harry Potter films. I will guarantee you that this is a wonderful... Okay, maybe not perfect, but a wonderful ending. I, I thought it was a brilliant ending. Like they, they didn't need to do anything more to it. And I, thought, I hope that they don't come up with some shitty epilogue thing where he goes into a new adventure and all that shit. I, I hope they don't do that, and I know they won't do that, because if they do, I'm going to slaughter whoever chooses to direct it. So anyway, that's me done, and I hope to see you guys later. And uh, no one's actually posted on this channel for a little while, so, you know, don't know what's happening. But, you know, I guess people aren't interested in the channel. I, I don't know. Um, but yes, anyway, that's me done, and I'll see you guys later. Alright, bye.